let's talk a little bit about Brexit because you've talked about it. Rebecca Long Bailey talked about it today. Will it? Do you envisage it being possible for Labour to back Tory backbench amendments around the customs union? Can you see the Labour Party voting for Tory amendments on that subject? Okay, we've put down amendments to the Trade and to the Customs Bill, uh, which is about a customs union. Interesting enough, the amendments have come from not just to Conservative backbenchers, but some signed by Labour backbenchers and other parties as well, which seem to be almost exactly the same as ours. So whichever route we get there, we hope we can convince a majority in Parliament for a customs union. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the government will accept the amendment and not push it to a vote, just accept it. Can you see that, can you see that being what happens from here, that we end up staying in a customs union, even though that's not the government's position then? I think it's almost inevitable. I think it's almost inevitable. I'd rather the government face up to that inevitability now. And I, I don't see any other way about securing the, well, the tariff-free access that we want and also securing the position with regard to the Northern Ireland border, um, which is extremely complex but this could help us greatly. Uh, Rebecca Long Bailey talked about the need to still be involved in doing trade deals. How does that sit alongside your policy of having a customs union with the EU? How do you then get to do other trade deals, or don't you? Well, that's why we said not the customs union, because the customs union would exclude us from having a real say about future trade, bill, trade deals. So the proposal that we've got is negotiate around a customs union so that we can have an influence on those trade deals via the... Uh, working with our partners in the European community. We think there's a deal to be had there. We think in moving in this direction, as well as moving in terms of maintaining membership of the customs union and single market during the transition period, we think we can change the atmosphere of the negotiations. Would you still then be able to go off and do, would Britain still be able to do uh, trade deals with China, with Australia, with other countries? We'd be able to negotiate alongside, the, through the A customs union, with our European partners, those trade deals. We'd have an influence. We would be rule makers rather than just rule takers. So the opportunity for us is working with our European partners to ensure that we have trade deals which reflect our own development of our own economy as well as Europe overall. And I'll do that on, the, on scale as well. What has the reception been within the party to your new, uh, your new policy around trade? Because for some years, the, uh, yourself, uh, Jeremy Corbyn and others have maybe thought about uh, Brussels as a capitalist club rather than the social Europe that others have thought about it. Well, as. as a party, we took the view that we should campaign for Remain. Jeremy and I made it very clear, campaign for Remain but reform as well. Because we didn't think we'd be able to convince people unless we had a reform agenda too. That addresses some of the perceived disbenefits of the European Union that people, people advocated during the campaign itself. Where we are now is exactly there. We're, we're we are into a reform agenda that we think can convince people that having a new relationship with Europe will be constructive, collaborative in the interest not just of Britain, but also the interest of Europe overall. So we're moving there. On the broader relationship between you and business and the, the relationship you want to have if you get into power yeah. in the United Kingdom, at Bloomberg News we talk about how our role is to chronicle capitalism. What will we write about if we see a Corbyn McDonnell leadership in the United Kingdom, what will the future of capitalism be? Okay, you'll see, first of all, you'll see new structures established immediately. We've put forward the idea that we'll have a strategic investment board, for example, so that the Treasury, working with the Bank of England, working with business leaders, representatives of both the Chamber, Institute of Directors, CBI, Federation of More Business, and trade unions, will have structures then in which when we go into government, they'll go into government as well. So they'll be directing the strategic investment of our economy. And we'll be investing in the long-term patient investment for the future, in new technology, we'll be attracting the high-skilled jobs that will result in high wages as well. So we'll have a productive economy. Our worry at the moment is that actually there isn't sufficient investment in the productive, invest in the productive economy. Too much investment is going into property speculation and the rentier capitalism that we see at the moment. So I think what you'll see is a clear direction for our economy overall. The other aspect is, well, we've been honest, completely straight with people. The sort of economy that we want is one that is prosperous, economically, but environmentally sustainable. And this is the difference between us and the Tories. We want that prosperity shared by everybody. That's the type of society we want, we want to create based upon that type of economy. Will you still call it a market economy? Yeah, I think it will be a mixed economy in the same way you've seen in other social democratic countries where they've developed those policies. You'll see there'll be a role for the state, and unfortunately at the moment the problem with this government is it recognises no real role for the state in terms of, for example, investment, delivering high-quality public services, and that will be matched by a role in partnership with the private sector.